So, hello everyone. So, yeah, nice to see you all after Ooh. lunch. Uh, why am I here? I'm definitely not an academic, so I will do a small talk about how to think and rethink about uh, tech families and the perspective of the market because I'm talking uh, as a small foundry owner. Um, and there was a moment in January, February this year when I was watching the Roboton. I was watching online, it's just always nice to see the videos. And I saw this talk by Ingrid Kukoshmi, which is not around now. But, and uh, she gave a talk called Boring Fonts. <laughs> and just the name, I was like listening to it and I got a bit worried. Maybe I'm also designing Boring Fonts. Is it, I will explain of course more about this concept, but this idea got me thinking more and more about type families uh, and how we can um, rethink them a bit. So again, I said, um, I run a novel type foundry, a small foundry in a small country, and I'll go into more deep in that too. Uh, I'm from Portugal, by the way. Uh, I did spend some time studying uh, in academia and studying in Reading. Uh, in 2011, I graduated, and I went back to to Portugal. So I started teaching and doing uh, my own typefaces with other foundries, custom fonts. Uh, for the last seven years. But two years ago, I decided to publish my own fonts because I couldn't find like retailers that would commit to, uh, not other foundries that would commit to the font, especially Artigo. Uh, and I thought, why not publish it myself? Because I think it's a good design. It took me, of course, a long time to get it done, and I'll talk a bit more about that. So it was a long time to set up a foundry. It was really labor intensive. Uh, so I didn't really have time to think about what am I going to publish and what uh, what kind of typefaces I want to put. I was just finishing stuff, the work that I had been, begun and doing a bit more. So over the last months, after doing all this work, uh, I started to think about you know catching up my breath, thinking about the advantages, disadvantages of running a small foundry, and also how the the best ways to plan. Uh, for the new type families, and also having a vision, my own vision of the industry and how I can position myself. So this is just a bit of examples of my work, and I hope you know these reflections come to resonate with you. So I'll start with reflection one. So why should you run a small foundry, and does the size matter? Um, I think it, it does matter the size of a foundry, and I will kind of explain you a bit the advantages of being a small foundry that I can bring um, to you. Uh, one of the things is design freedom, of course, because you're the only designer and you don't have anyone telling you what to do, but of course this freedom can also be sometimes overwhelming, you need to find your own uh, projects, so you have to be self-initiated all the time. But it's important that you can choose what you can design, what you want to explore. Some of the article typeface probably never would have come to life if I didn't follow it myself and kept designing it for a long time. Um, you also have more ability to experiment, uh, to experiment not just in the design field, but also testing uh, fonts in the market, just putting stuff out and then see what the users like and how they uh, interact with your fonts and giving feedback. I've done this a lot, uh, even before I had the Foundry, with uh, some platforms that gave this uh, feedback. I will talk, I will probably mention that a bit later. So experimenting is a good thing. Also, the advantages of a small foundry would be that you can get your voice faster, though it takes time. It's not something that you'll get in the first years, I think, of the foundry, but you can definitely start uh, by doing your uh, practice, doing a lot, a lot of fonts, and then you start to have your own voice, and that's also going to make you 
Get it now, it's faster than that. We'll see that. But of course, there are these advantages of being small. One of these is you have to run the business yourself, uh, doing all the business parts of the, of the foundry. And for this, you need a lot of education. <laughs> it took me a while, but I, I did study a lot, reading a lot of books about marketing, strategy, brand. I mean, it's really important, I believe, for, for me. And also, you need to do all the administration yourself. Um, but of course, a lot of business will give you less time for design, <laughs> which is the hard part. Uh, when working alone, you get less feedback from colleagues. Um, so sometimes um, I find it hard to have, a, you know, to discuss and want to show things. It makes it a bit harder. So coming to conferences or being with, in, con in contact with friends will really help to keep that uh, feedback going. Uh, small foundry again. You have less time. You have lots of like time constraints because you will have to manage uh, all the administrative parts. But also, we all know typeface design is a very time-consuming activity. So if you want to do, you really need to be thoughtful about what you are prioritizing <coughs> or doing. So prioritizing design is super important. And then of course. Uh, leaving time and good time management to get to get the, everything done. And then being in a small country, everybody sometimes asks me, yeah, you're in Portugal, really partner of Europe. It's actually like an elbow of Europe. So it takes a long time to get everywhere. Uh, but there are some, definitely some advantages and disadvantages. I will go through them. So it's far away, <laughs> like I was saying, a bit far of the, the rest of the centers in Thai, even graphic design that we have the community. It's a small economy, so you're not going to be able to sell a lot in Portugal, and you probably need to have a lot of contacts with graphic designers to do that. You have less colleagues in your field, though there are many, I have many graphic design friends, which is super valuable for feedback as well. So you really need to, again, travel and get to the people. The advantages, you can get noticed faster because you can get uh, the mainstream like media, people will call you because you're in a small country and there's like two, two or three or five type designers and there's only one woman. So they always call for, for interviews. Or, so this is interesting. Uh, but of course, it's not the most important. The most important one, uh, it's a dialogue with designers. I think it's good because because you're small, you can you're in Portugal, you can get easier to all these communities. And of course, the sun. That's just the, being in Portugal is nice. Um, you need to definitely in a small foundry get a good network of colleagues around the world because we're all working remote more and more. So it's really important to have conversations, real Skype conversations about your work and showing. And I think I try to keep that with some friends, uh, those colleagues that I respect the work. Being self-critical, again, <laughs> that's what got me to do this talk, is that I was looking at my own work and trying to make it better by approaching it in this way. Um, being aware of what's going on around you, it's really important in the industry, uh, both graphic design again, and writing and, and type design. And getting focused, it's all about managing your time and focusing on what you really want to do. This is what happens when you talk to friends. So this is uh, uh, me and my friend Victoria working far away for eight months in a, in a type design. So this kind of, uh, this uh, interaction with the colleagues are really important. This is from an old talk we did uh, together. So just so you can see how we can connect. Uh, so right now, thinking about the type families is not just a question of, of design, but also a question of surviving as a foundry. Because you really need to create something that will engage your uh, your users, so they can keep coming in and supporting your work, and then you can create more phones. So. <laughs> M word, we'll see what that is. So how much should we care about the market and when starting a new type family? This is sometimes we never know what's going to be popular, so we never know which fonts are really going to stick. 
Um, but there are a few things that we can be aware of what people need. So the user's needs are usually there and important. So um, it's, of course, not very, like, uh, it's almost a taboo when you say you're being uh, motivated by by money, but in this case, uh, type design is really a uh, front-loaded work, and to need to continue uh, creating retail fonts, you need a profit from your last and community releases. So the, the market will make you or break you. So we need to know our users. Design trends usually fast, uh, but the users needs as consistent as I was saying. So we can choose to ignore it, or we can choose to look at it. So I'm picking up on Mary Catherine's um, Font survey from this year, uh, and I was just looking at what what the users uh, care about. I see, I can see the number of styles like the biggest font, and then the alternatives like alternates, ligatures are really really high. Uh, also, the diacritics that we can you know we can say that we really care about diacritics. So. We do care about those things, and I'm not talking about spacing and earning because we can all agree it's a standard business, uh, I mean a standard uh, industry that we want to fulfill. But then I, I thought it was also really interesting, the one where the foundry that designed the typeface, people are really responding to your own uh, brand or your own name. Uh, probably as a kind of some reassurance that they think, okay, I know this person, I can see there's some quality in the work. But also, I believe right now the trend is a lot emotional, and I think it always was an emotional need that people create with the maker of the font, and I think it's really important. Uh, of course, it needs to be authentic the way you communicate with your users. But I think it's, this is like one of the things uh, that is trending and it's important for me. So this, of course, would be for a different talk. One of the interesting facts I looked at was, okay, so they say the number of styles is like is super important for the user. But then I went to the to the best sellers list, in this case of my phones, because it's just easier because it's so big. Uh, and they and I found that in number five, there's actually a family with just 12 weeks instead of the 100 or something, or Velvetica or something like that. And again, I believe that this typeface, Brandon Grotesque, that you all know from Anton Dora, it's actually because people really love it, the quality of the design, and it's com coming from people's hearts, kind of an emotional thing. That's what I believe at least. Uh, from the survey, uh, you also see that the people are looking for flexibility in a font, so if you give them some uh, alternates, they will have a different feel in the font. In this case, is Akura has different, the U and the A, and it just completely changes the font, which is quite interesting to see. So some people might say you only need it one font and you don't need uh, you know, all this difference. But I think the user likes these things, so I, I want to listen to, to what they want. But of course, we don't want, to, we don't want the market to, uh, to be the boss of our work and to say what they want, we're going to do it for them. But I think this communication is important to keep uh, the dialogue with the user more than letting them say, oh, I want this, and you just give them what they want. But I believe it's important to be attentive. So we go back to the more uh, conceptual thought about uh, typefaces, type families. We know if we all know all the variations that a typeface can have, and this is very simple for almost everyone, but optical size, weight, width, and style. But type families, usually for a type family, you need the same name, same design concept, same proportions, same next height, consistency. This is some of the concepts I was I got when I was reading about type families. But in the end, we can find many examples that actually don't follow these ideas of the same name or even the same proportions, so they have very different consistencies. I believe consistency as we think inside of a type uh, of a font, it's really important between the letters, we want to be consistent, but between the styles, maybe we don't have to. So we will talk 
more about this idea with a few examples. Uh, Romulus, I really like it in ever since I studied in Reading and then I came to here to see all the, the work by Jan and Fripa and, and this typeface really challenges and it was the idea here was to make a font that the typeface family that had many styles for book design. So you have the, the, the Cancelleresca that has, you know, in, in style it's completely different from the Roman. So his work was kind of the first attempt to do this, uh, this connection. It makes me, um, it's very compelling to me in, the, in, this ter in the terms, even if the design is inconsistent and it's not perfect, and, but I really get inspired on this. And even the name can be a cha uh, challenge. Uh, as we can see in this case, the example of Demos and Praxis from her, it's a really interesting picture and I really love it. And, because here in the bottom it says that Demos and Francis are a super family. In the end, they have different names, uh, in, and also with Flora the Italian. They have different names, but they are sharing most of the structure, uh, the shape, so they're really, really close to each other, but they have different names. And I found this why the different names, and then you have your practice, Praxis and Flora. So they were designed to really work together. But in this case, uh, Harry was saying, it is one of the typographer's pleasures to find interesting combinations of these two typeface. I don't want to prescribe anything to the user and therefore have consciously unlink the members of the family. This brings me to uh, another really interesting concept of this prescription. And when we're doing this big, huge typefaces with the same name, with all the styles inside, maybe we're just you know, giving the, making the work for the designer, for the graphic designer, instead of himself like trying to match and, and trying to find a real match. So I also thought that this idea of the making a family but with separate names was uh, really interesting. So should type families be small or super? So they can be super. And we can make it very rational, but we can also make them more expressive. But first we go through the super families. More or less the, the definitions I found were mostly above eight, eight styles would already be a super family. For the TDC, uh, the Type Directors Club, they consider a super family after eight styles, which is kind of strange because usually now everybody produces a font of 12, and can we call it a super family just because it has so many weights, uh, 12 weights. But some people consider it uh, above 20 styles, that would be uh, the parameter. But before uh, this idea of styles and weights, and it was be before the super family was thought of being a serif together with the sans, with the examples of Scala. Scala signs and then uh, quadrat, quadrat signs, meta. So all these typefaces in the early 90s were following this, uh, this trend of the super family with the serif and the signs. <laughs> right now we can look at it more in multiple styles because the, there is the, the slabs, the serifs, the condensed, extended, optical size, everything is packed in one, in one big uh, super family. Of course, I'm not doing a historical, so we're not talking about universe and thesis and Lucida also with all the, the ways, but just to get a generic idea of what super families are. They're also very time consuming and we we'll look into that. They take so long, so why why should you design a super family? But uh, unless you have a commission and you really want to design a typeface system that you know, that you can work on it for a year or two when you're getting uh, paid for it. It's really, it's really interesting, like the case of The Guardian that we all know, it's a really, really good project. But unless you have that, why would you do a super family? Because it really takes all the time and focus to do it. Uh, we will always need super families, but let's look into it. And into it a bit more. I want to talk about the idea 
give the multiple masters because should families be defined by it? And I believe that's where the boring bones came from, the idea that we all, because we are using this technology, we're getting some very close related weights. So this makes the font, sometimes the fonts look very automatic or very uh, just full, filled with lots of weights with no really uh, design intention. Uh, so we all know multiple masks was developed in the 90s to give more choice and flexibility to the user. But then this concept was dropped. We kept the interpolation technology and it's really, really important for us. But it can make this a bit lazy. And this is actually one of my ones. And you can see all the weights and all these interpolations. And maybe one or two weights could be dropped. You don't probably don't really need them. Or you can even be more thoughtful, thoughtful about them. So to make our fonts feel more, uh, the multiple masses can make them more uninteresting, especially when it comes to the, this middle way. Some foundries try to design a middle, like a, a regular in the middle of the interpolation, so you can get a bit more of the feeling of the font instead of having just the extremes. Um, and maybe we don't need to go to, it's very tempting to generate every permutation of the font because it's there and we can go, we can just click export and have it all. But in the end, we probably should th be thinking more about giving the user some choices but curated choices. That's at least my perspective in this case of the multiple masters and how we can uh, make it more useful. So this is just a few quotes, I'm not going to you can kind of read it, but I do agree a lot with the with Paul van der Leyen in this uh, the Super Family Slanted magazine, which is amazing. And then he says all these free weights, the interpolated weights, just an easy way to blow the fan and get more money. Again, it's a question about you know having extra sales maybe on your styles because people really want a lot of styles, but do we really need to put all of them out? <coughs> And in this case, Eric says something really important that I want to explore more. It's that maybe we need to spend more time in the basic design instead of making all this interpolation. <coughs> so, especially as a small foundry, you really need to focus on personality instead of size. Some point. And you can make them really interesting. As a trend, I can definitely see some problems. <coughs> Just an example where the whole foundry families, they only have a few weights, a few styles, and then things start growing as they become popular. Uh, and, this, and then we go back to the style and to the design concept with the siblings and cousins. The idea of the siblings is the way that they look at the same, they have the same system. But this case with Offer, it, it's really interesting with Knockout because the, the weights were actually designed separately and not as a like they extended them, and they were definitely designed separate. This makes it more compelling. So these ones are the siblings, very, very close to each other, using multiple masters in a good way. Optical size is probably one of the most interesting interpolation axes, in my sense, for for using the multiple masters. In this case, Grifo from Cuyabreu, using the, the multiple masters. I have to run a bit faster now. So this is my idea of cousin again. Joining different styles in the same uh, in the same font, so I have completely different styles in the same font. And some other foundries are really uh, going after this. They can they can share the same structure, but give some uh, some consistencies that they can get different styles, different aesthetic results. I will pass the examples fast. The font by Elisa Wa, Minotaur. Typefaces that I believe they really explore this concept, like Sandbo uh, from Swiss typefaces. But what about the only child? There are typefaces that are just one style, one weight, uh, and just one. And Paul Wonderland says, I would prefer you know, to see people doing 10 different typefaces than just making all the interpolations in one big super family. And I agree with him for sure. And I believe it's a trend now. We can see many typefaces with just one. They provide more room for experiment, express originality. They can fill a gap in design, something that wasn't there. And a foundry might have a big super 
the SANS family, but because you have other display fonts, you might get more people to come to your website and look at your work because they will feel more connected to your personality. Uh, Font of the Month Club is super interesting because it's a lot of home childs, and I think this is really interesting. They can still grow, but they, they give out the personality and the care in the one design. So what if we treat Thai foundries as startups? You probably all know this concept of the minimal viable product. So the idea to push a product that is not completely finished and the idea to put it out before so people can use it and then give feedback. Um, and this is already happening. It happened with Google Fonts well, a few years back, pushing good fonts out and then correcting them and the popular ones get more extended. Future Fonts is also doing that. I feel very connected to that because I participated in FontU back a few years ago, which had similar concept. And again, putting things out and then giving the, the, the result. I believe that the, we are not going to stop making you know, perfect fonts, but we can definitely benefit, benefit from this idea. <coughs> But some skepticals might say, I can publish an unfinished typeface. OK, it's OK. But a published typeface is better than, than a perfect but unpublished typeface. Sand blood that we saw before took 10 years to develop. My own article typeface took me five years, and it will continue. But if you take all this time, you lose the momentum. So publish now, get feedback and then encourage designers to interact with you in your work. I want to show an example of this with um, Prosima Nova from Mark Simonson, which I really admire. And this is an example of news. He started the typeface in 94, publishing with a different name. In 97, uh, or early 2000s, he started to redesign it. And then he published it in 2005, but 2003 it was used in Rolling Stone magazine. So it took him really a long time to get this successful typeface built up to 140 styles. So what that means, he started with a really just a few weights, and then it kind of grew. In this case, what I mean as well is that we don't need to worry so much about this technical aspect. We need to worry about the design, the concept, and don't sweat the technique, as Jean-Baptiste said. Just to wrap up, five things I kind of learned from this um, reflection. Design more, more fonts, more styles, and think, of it, think about it very well. As a small foundry, you really need to do this. You never know what it's going to sell, so don't worry about that. Yeah. Um, first versions always suck. That's mean. You are always going to find mistakes. You're going to always find stuff that you want to make different, but that's okay. You're growing. It's your growing path, and you will get better at it as much as you do if you do more and more. Super families, as we've seen some examples, they start small. Scala was done before, and then Sans came three years later. So things don't just grow like they are ready to be. And fonts are not set in stone, they're digital. We can go back and forth, we can correct them. Of course, we want to push the best product we can, the best quality we can, that we know that we can do. Uh, but we can definitely um, benefit from these thoughts, in my opinion. So my, my idea is to make as much fonts as I can, and life allows, because it's not very easy to find it all the time you need, um, and try to sell them. So that's it. Find me. <coughs> uh,